Hi everyone. The person Nodon seems to have gotten himself stuck in an infinite desert today. He could probably benefit from a map. So that's what we're going to be doing. As is usual at this point, we're starting with the person Nodon and a camera. Left stick character movement, right stick camera. And we're going to add a location sensor for later. The person Nodon's X and Z coordinates are going to be very important for this map. Now we want to stick this onto a HUD so that it stays on the camera no matter what we do. So we'll start with a head node on. We'll add in a simple box object. We're going to make this long because it's going to frame the bottom of the screen. And then we'll attach that to the head. I noticed that using slightly bigger objects attached to the head will help it to shake less and jitter less. Make sure the connection points are Y positive, Y negative so that it's underneath and then leave it as visible and movable for now. We'll make it red so it's easier to spot. So now you can see we have that red bar along the bottom of the screen and we're gonna build our HUD elements on top of it. We're gonna be using a free slide connector to position the map on our screen. We'll add in a box that we're going to use as the basic map. And we'll make that a little bit smaller. In this case, I've worked out uh, 0.6 by 0.6 with a Z of 0 0.20. We don't want it to be too thick. We'll leave it visible and movable for now and make it black. For the connection points, you're going to want Z negative and Z positive so that it's right in front of that red bar. When I started to try and piece together creating HUDs, I would use boxes connected to each other, but I realized that the free slide connector lets you freely adjust the position of something once it's attached to an object on the head node on. We're going to add three constants here, one for each of the positions, X, Y, and Z. We'll adjust these three numbers until we get the right place on the screen. If you had a different shaped map, or if you wanted to put it in a different place, you would just play around with these three variables. So negative one, one, and one works for our example, and you don't need to use these constant nodons. You could have one or two, or your own method for getting the position of the map. We're gonna have another free slide connector and a smaller box, which is going to be the cursor. We'll have it set to a size of 10 by 10, with a Z depth of 0.22. We want it to just barely be thicker than the map box so it stands out. Connection points will be center, center, so that it's in the middle. We now have a map on the HUD and a player cursor. Now we just need to run the player coordinates into the free slide connector in a way that it will understand. So we have a 3D world. We're moving in X, left to right, and Z, which is forward and back. We need to convert the coordinates into much smaller numbers so that it can reflect on our map. In this case, we're gonna be using an input range of negative 20 to 20. I'll fix that in a little bit in this video. With an output range of negative 0.25 to positive 0.25. Really the map nodon is just scaling down the position of the player. Since we're moving from 3D movement on the X and Z to a 2D map, we're going to be switching it to X and Y, left to right, up and down. Connect the X input but the Z output will connect into the Y input 
of the free slide connector. I'm realizing here we're starting in the bottom left. Now this is really because I put 0 to 20 on the map, but in an attempt to fix that what I actually did is something that you might want to know. In the frame of reference for the location sensor, you'll likely want to switch this to initial position anyways, since it's likely your character won't be in the center of the map. That way, the location sensor will always be in reference to where the player started. Here we're fixing it so that it's negative 20 to 20. And this is a good opportunity to highlight that if you have other objects that you want to be tracked on the minimap, you could probably do some math on the location sensor outputs before they go into the map so that they start on a different place on the minimap. So now it works. We move around and the position and movement is reflected on the minimap at the scale that we've selected. So in this case, 20 units will be the difference from the center to the right or the center to the left. You would adjust this based on how big your map is. Now it's working, but this style would hardly fit most games that you'd want to make. So we're going to use the texture nodons to give a custom map and character cursor texture. You want to make note of the size of the object that you're going to put the texture on. And if you want it to be transparent, you can set it to invisible. We'll match the object size on the texture node on size, and then select the surface. In this case, we're going to be using Z negative. Now we're going to draw our map. I want to keep it simple for now, a big old rustic pirate map yellow. Now we'll check the size on our cursor. It is 10 by 10. Make sure it's invisible. Change the size on the texture node on and select the right texture surface. We'll make a simple red dot for now. And it worked. Now we're a red dot on an infinite sandy surface. Things aren't looking much better for yellow person node on here. We're going to make a gameplay element that ties into the map. There are different methods to find out the correlated spot in the 3D world to the 2D map world. Probably the easiest one is to walk around as your character and take note of the location and then go back in and draw it on the map. In this case I went with some boxes because I knew I wanted it to be 10 units north and 5 units east. So for demonstration, we'll use a touch sensor and we'll connect it to a teleport. So essentially, we're going to make an invisible teleport entrance on this infinite desert that would take this person back to their apartment. You can start to imagine why a map that points you in the right direction would be useful here. So we'll just fiddle with the teleport settings so that it works on the person object. and the touch sensor. See now you can walk over to it, take note of its position. You can skip the object part, I just use it to help me set it up. And now we'll take the relative area of where it was on the texture node on and put a little X. X marks the spot. You might be able to bring up the drawing guide and then have a more precise way of checking units on your texture so you can draw things that correlate to the 3D world. Now we have our player dot and we know where we're going. Now the person node on is back in his apartment with his dear fish. But now the map doesn't really make so much sense. So the last thing we're going to do is have the map be destroyed at a certain point when it's no longer needed or when the objective has been complete. To do that, we'll just make a destroy object. We'll connect them to the objects that the map textures are connected to. And we'll make sure that they're destructible by the destroy object.
and you can attach whatever logic you want to go into the destroy object input. Now our person Odan has discovered the proper position of the infinite desert teleporter and he can safely return home to be with his pet.